Welcome to another example with Opta Planner. In this case, we will optimize the cloud. So here you can see a use case, a simple use case, where we have two computers and we have six processes we need to assign those to those two computers. Uh, the two computers are in the cloud, of course, right? So um, when we assign processes to these computers, we need to make sure that the computers have enough uh, CPU enough memory and enough network bandwidth to accommodate for all of their processes. So in this case, we, we assigned four processes to computer zero, and you can see that there is enough uh, CPU. Actually, there's only six gigahertz being used of the 24 gigahertz available on this computer. And there's enough memory net uh, memory, uh, 10 gigabyte being used of only 60, of 69 gigabytes. But uh, the network bandwidth is just barely enough. That's, there are 16 gigabyte being used of 16 gigabyte being available. So that means that we cannot use not, not assign either of the other two processes to this machine because the network bandwidth would um, would be that hard constraint would basically be broken. Now, for every computer that we use, we also have to pay a uh, maintenance cost. So to, because we have any because we have processes assigned to uh, this computer, we have to pay uh, $4,800, right? So let's take a look at um, a bigger data set. Here we have uh, 100 computers. If you scroll down, you can see most uh, a few of them. Um, again, with different characteristics. Some have more CPU power uh, and more memory and so forth. They are newer, but then of course, they usually have a higher price. And we have 300 processes which are unassigned. So we need to figure out which process do we put on which computer. Let's uh, let Opta Planner uh, figure that out for us. All right, so he started. I'm, I'm just going to stop it a little bit. Here's his first assignment. As you can see, um, none of the hard constraints are actually broken. Why is this? You can see the zero hard constraints broken here on the bottom. And if we scroll down, you can also clearly see that there's always enough uh, CPU, RAM, and network bandwidth, bandwidth to accommodate for all of the processes. Sometimes there's only one process, as you can see on a computer. Sometimes there's, in this case, 18 or 16 processes on the same computer. So um, that depends, of course. Uh, especially, of course, the computers which have uh, more hardware and have a higher price will be able to uh, put more uh, processes. Now, let's see what happens if you give it a little bit more time, because now we come at the price of $126,000, and that's, that's pretty expensive. So let's uh, see what happens if we give Opta Planner a bit more time to optimize this. As we give it more time, you can actually see that it's moving processes around and it's shutting down computers. Uh, it's not using computers. So for example, now it started using computer seven, but if we would scroll down, you would see that more and more computers go black. Right, so um, it actually figures out the way to use the least, the least amount of computers to schedule all of these processes, um, uh, to run all of these processes uh, at the same time, um, without actually uh, having too little hardware for any of these processes. Okay, nice. So uh, let's take a quick look at the domain model behind this. So we have a process over here on the right side. Uh, which requires a number of CPU, some memory, and some network bandwidth. We need to assign this, which is a planning variable, to the computer. This is on the left here. And the computer has a number of CPU power, memory, and network bandwidth again. So we just have to make sure that the sum of the, the, process, of the CPU of, of all the processes belonging to one computer, so uh, all, to all one computer, are less than the CPU power of this computer. And uh, also for any computer which has at least one process, we'll have to pay the maintenance costs, right? Okay, great. But that's a pretty simple example, right? So let's go back here. There are only three resources, CPU, memory, network, bandwidth. And there's no notion of the computers being uh, where they are, on which location or in which building they are. Um, and there's no notion in, uh, on, on any sort of relationship between the processes. So let's take a look at a more complex example called the machine reassignment problem. In this case, we have to assign um, the same thing again, processes to machines. Here they're called machines instead of uh, computers. But there's one big difference. Um, they are actually, all the processes are actually already assigned to machines. So we have to move them 
Um, and there's a move cost involved, of course, if we decide to move a process from one machine to another mach uh, machine. So let's take a look at the domain uh, at the domain model for this one. It's a bit more complex, as you can see. So again, we have a process over here, and again we have a machine, which so the computer over here. Um, and I've split up the process and the process assignment class. There's a one-to-one -one relationship between them. Um, as I found that more easier for me to write. Uh, or to understand, basically. Um, now, the process assignment is uh, assigned to uh, an original machine, so that means that this pr process assignment is um, has an, uh, is uh, on that machine currently, but we have to choose on which machine we're going to put it, so that's the planning variable. If we put it on the same machine, then we don't have to put uh, pay a cost, it just stays there. If we move it to a different machine, then we will have to pay a moving cost, right? Which is a soft constraint, right? Okay, now, uh, let's, so what are the hard constraints? Now, one of the hard, con again, we have the same hard constraints and as the, the original example, where each process has a number of resources, such as CPU, RAM, and network bandwidth. Um, in this case, however, the number of resources is, is dynamic. It depends on the data set. In some cases, we have up to 12 uh, resources, uh, such as hard disk space and so forth. Um, and then each machine has a certain capacity of uh, for this resource. Now, there's a difference there in, in this case is that each machine actually has a maximum capacity uh, for example, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM available, but it also has a safety capacity, which is usually about 90% of the maximum capacity. So what's the difference? The, we cannot go over the maximum capacity. That would be breaking a hard constraint. But as a safety precaution, uh, we actually want to be below 90% of, of, um, of uh, the maximum capacity, or actually the safety capacity because it's, it depends on machine to machine it's not always 90 percent so when we actually go over the safety capacity of a machine we have this costs us a certain number of soft constraints and if we go back to the example you can actually see that's what's happening here none of these uh, uh, processes use more than the maximum capacity which is uh, the number on the right right uh, they're always lower but a number of them do use more um, uh, resources than the safety capacity and those are hi currently highlighted in orange and they actually make out the most part of the uh, soft score that we're getting here at the bottom so you can see where we are we have a very big number here because we actually break the si safety capacity a lot right so it would be nice if we use the extra room we have here for example of that safety capacity uh, to move processes into there without actually, without actually harming the other uh, resource capacities, right? So that's that's the name of the game, and that's what OptoPlanner try do, does for us, right? So um, let's take an, uh, a look at the domain model again. So that's one of the hard constraints, but there's another hard constraint, namely all the processes, uh, each process belongs to a service. So that, for example, the service is the calendar service, and it has actually multiple processes. Uh, the reason that it has multiple processes running the same service is because if one of those processes goes down, then the other processes will fail over for this process, right? Now, the thing is, of course, if two processes of the same service would be running on the same machine and the machine goes down, then there won't be much failover because both of the processes will go down. So, of course, there's a hard constraint which says that if, a, if two processes belong to the same service, they should be running on different machines, right? Um, and it's not just that. It's not just the machine which can go down. The entire location can go down. The entire data center can get hit by a earthquake or can lose its connection to the internet, right? So there's another hard constraint which says uh, we want a process of the same service to be spread out as much as possible to different locations. Um, we will still sometimes have multiple multiple processes on the same uh, in the same location, even if they're the same service. Um, but there is a specific um, there's a amount of spread we want to to accomplish, right? And uh, on top of this this hard constraint, um, there's another one that services actually depend on each other. For example, the calendar service depends on the mail service, and then uh, we need to make sure that any process uh, for of the calendar service 
runs in the neighborhood of the so in the same neighborhood as any process of the as at least one process of the mail servers. So there, there's a, there's other hard constraints and, and stuff like that, right? Uh, and of course, um, all of these are implemented. These are uh, and uh, Opto Planner takes all of these into account. So let's see what happens here we, uh, when we start solving this. As you can see, as we give it more and more time, the the score actually goes down quite a lot actually, and we have actually a better uh, form of the uh, a better opt more optimized cloud. Now, what you probably see is that the screen doesn't refresh. Uh, that's because it just takes too long. It would uh, uh, hang the application basically in this case because there's just too much data here. Um, so let me just stop it, and you see that the screen actually does refresh. Right. Okay. So it's refreshed, and now there should be less orange, or at least the orange should be closer to the safety capacity. So and not so close to the maximum capacity. Okay. So um, now to conclude, I'd like to show you one more thing, which is uh, real-time planning. Um, I'll show it on on the uh, simple example. It's easier to show there. Um, so here in this case, we're again going to schedule uh, these 100 computers. So let's continue again. Um, so it was already pretty good. So you know, still improving a little bit. Uh, now what we're going to do is do a, a, a real-time change. Uh, let's suppose one of the computers goes down. It actually gets killed. So let's, we're going to kill this computer. Just see what happens to these processes. Right? So they get unassigned for a split second and a planner immediately assigns them again. And the score actually didn't get much worse. So this means that it didn't restart from scratch. It could actually uh, do this in real time. Uh, and I've, uh, in, um, in the logs, I can actually show this happens in, in just a few milliseconds, right? Thanks for watching this demonstration. If you want to know more about OptoPlanner, just go to the website optoplanner.org. And if you want to try this example yourself, just download the zip, unzip it, and run the examples. Thanks for watching. Bye.